Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. I just felt led by the Lord to come out here and just talk. Um, the Lord is coming back so soon, and my wife is going to be sharing a rapture dream that she, she just had today. And um, it just gives us a, a perspective about how soon the Lord is going to come, you know. And I want y'all to really take advantage of the time that we have right now because in a moment in the twinkle of an eye, it can all be over. So I've been led by God for years to encourage y'all. I want to encourage y'all in the Lord and let y'all know how much God loves you and how much God thinks about you despite our situations, despite of what we're going through. Sometimes we doubt certain things because certain circumstances come our way or live in situations, but that shouldn't determine, you know, the way God feels about you. He, he loves you despite what you're going through, despite sickness or heartache or pain or family issues or financial issues or the different things that we go through in this world. He's a a God and loves us unconditionally, you know. All he asks us to do is believe in him and trust in him. So I, I want to encourage you guys today and let you know that God loves you. Um, those that have made Jesus Christ Lord and believe that he died, he was buried, and he rose again. I want you to say that we are blessed despite our circumstances and our situations. We're blessed because of what he did on the cross. We're blessed because our names are written in the book of life. We're blessed because he's coming back soon to come back for a bride without spot, wrinkle, or any such blemish. Amen. And I want to thank all of you guys for coming to the ministry. Some of y'all have been following us for a very long time as this walk with Christ has not always been easy, but we are so grateful and thankful to have a family such as we have in y'all and i'm going to keep encouraging you guys to keep the faith and and walk in the love of our lord and savior jesus christ and may he continue to bless us and keep us and and, and let his will be done in our lives on earth as it is in heaven amen and um i just was I haven't did this in a while, y'all, just walking and talking about God, but the Lord, and he put it on my heart to make a video tonight, and I just want to let y'all know y'all are loved by God. He loves you, and a lot of y'all are watching this video, and you haven't really submitted yourself to God. You haven't really been going to church. You haven't really been seeking God. You haven't touched your Bibles. You haven't been praying. And you may be watching this video and you may come across this video. The time is now, you guys. The time is now. Look what they're doing in Israel. Look what they're doing in Israel. Look what they're talking about splitting God's land. They're talking about having a peace treaty between Israel and the enemies of the cross. These Palestinian people. They're enemies of the cross. Okay? Anybody who does not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died and he was buried and he rose again, and don't believe that Jesus Christ was God's only begotten son, and wants to jihad and been killing Jews and Christians for years, brothers and sisters, they're enemies of the cross, and now they want to give them Jerusalem. Now they want to give them God's holy land. We're living in the end times, you guys, and it's not time for us to you know, to to panic, but you guys got to get saved. And I pray for you guys because it's not about watching a video and then clicking on to the next video. Some people watch videos and just click on to the very next video and they just, you guys just want to see what's trending and what's going on, man. But it's time to look at your own life, you know. In the rapture, in the moment of the twinkling of an eye, you're either ready or you're not. And it's all going to be over with. You're going to have to deal with the Antichrist. You're going to have to deal with God's wrath. And we haven't seen God's wrath until that day. It's called the great and terrible day of the Lord. It's his wrath. Now imagine, we've seen what men can do. We've seen shoes get, we've seen schools get shot up. We've seen slavery, how all of those black people were murdered and killed and 
beaten because of their skin. We've seen, you know, with the Jews and how they was gassed and in gas chambers and taught they was going in there to take showers. You know, they was told they're going in there to take showers and a lot of them didn't come out. Many of them did. Millions died, brothers and sisters. We've seen how evil man can get. And we've seen how wicked this world can be. But we have not seen an angry God pull his wrath out on the world. We have not seen that yet. Where all waters turn to blood. Where water is made bitter. Where you can't buy or sell. You know, we haven't seen that. We take these things for, for granted sometimes, but God wants you to be ready to escape and stand before him. Amen. And I've tried to do my best as a watchman on the wall to encourage you guys. There's been some ups and downs in my life, and I just look at my life and I see how far God has brought me, and I see how many people have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord, how many people are getting, hate, getting, getting healed by his precious blood. And I thank all of you guys for y'all support. And, you know, I thank all of you guys for helping this ministry to continue to grow, that people can get saved and born again. And um, he show us these dreams because time is almost over, you know. And I think about one of the last dreams the Lord showed me was these FEMA camps coming down, these concentration camps. And they're going to give people a certain amount of time to get in these camps. And I believe that that's going to come to pass. I believe that this is the Great Tribulation. I think that people that do not comply with the New World Order and do, does not get these chips, and I think they're going to put those people in FEMA camps. Um, it's just what Ken Peters, the prophet Ken Peters, um, talked about when he had the, the, um, his rapture dream, his prophetic dream where he's seen the end. And uh, I'm sad to say, you guys, I got in contact with Ken Peters just the other day, and he's went on home to, to glory, you guys. His wife told me he, he died February 14, 2021. So I want you guys to pray for the Peters family. He was a, he was a great man of God. And um, he's in glory now, and I think about his, his dream and how they rounded, rounded him up and rounded his wife up, and many other people was rounded up because of their faith, and they gave them um, an option, will you deny him? And they said, no, I would not deny him. And they was told to stand to keep in the line. And those that did deny the Lord, they was pulled out of the line. You know, I guess they was free to go home. But they was free to go home, but they was, their new home would be the lake of fire. Because God said, if any man deny me, him will I deny in heaven. And I know what the Lord means by that, because there's some people that's going to deny God just for food and just for the everyday resources. But we can never deny the Lord because our life is about 80 to 90 to 100 years old, you guys. That's, that's not a long life. We thank God for every day that he gives us because our days are numbered. But if you think about it, you know, life is short. That's why the Bible says our life is a vapor. So to to get some chicken or a burger or get some water from people that's hungry and get the mark and then you spend all of eternity in a lake of fire the bible talks about in revelation 2015 it's not worth it you guys that's why we got to get born again and start seeking the lord seek him while he shall be found the bible says seek the lord while he shall be found so that means one day he's not going to be found brothers and sisters amen so continue to believe in the lord's coming and the rapture Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, brothers and sisters. Lean not into your own understanding. Just because, you know, I felt down in the spirit today. I felt really down in the spirit today. And I felt de depressed, depressed a little bit today. And I felt down because certain situations wasn't happening in my life. And, 
you know, this this life is a lot of struggles in this life, and I'm waiting on the Lord to move in my life, and sometimes God doesn't move when we want him to move, but we have to have patience, you know? And um, my wife said, what are you feeling down for, Mike? You see how much he's blessed us, and you know how much he's done for you, and I start thinking about the good things of life. You, so, you see, when, when you're down and you're feeling depressed and you're feeling down sometimes, you got to think about how good God is. You got to think about the good things. That's why the Bible says, whatsoever things are good, whatsoever things are, you know, are, are, are wonderful and all that, whatsoever things are virtuous and things, I think on those things. You got to think about how good God is. You got to think about all the things that he's done in your life and how he saved us and gave us eternal life. The greatest gift that God gave us is his life, brothers and sisters. Somebody gave us his life. Brothers and sisters, he gave up his life so we can have life. So I, I start encouraging myself, you know, because the problems that we have in this world is just so minute compared to the to to the to the glory which it shall be revealed in us. Sometimes we look at our problems and they kind of it kind of it overwhelms us sometimes, but we can't look at our problems. We gotta start looking at at, at the God of heaven who can solve your problems. Amen. And sometimes you got to wait on the Lord. And this is a message for somebody tonight. Sometimes you got to wait on the Lord. And God is, is, is teaching us endurance. And he's teaching us patience. Amen. Because God was patient. Amen. He's patient. And they had him up there on the cross for all those hours. Amen. He was on that cross for all of those hours, you guys. As they was up there looking at him and mocking him and saying, get down. And he was so patient. Even he could have just thought about destroying them and he could have destroyed those people. And he stayed up there. He could have came down off that cross if he wanted to because he was God and he was righteous. He wouldn't have been wrong if he would have came down off the cross because he's a righteous God. Amen. But. The scriptures, how many know that God have magnified his word over his name? And the scripture says, God who was slain before the foundation of the world, he stayed obedient even to the death of the cross. We just read that yesterday. Amen. He humbled himself. So when you start getting down in depression and, 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 and those spirits of depression start coming on, you start thinking about the goodness of God. Start thinking about how somebody gave his life for you. Somebody suffered for you. Somebody gave up their last breath so you can live. Glory be to God. We serve a wonderful God, y'all. There's no one like him, brothers and sisters. You can't look left. You can't look right. You can't look down. And you can't look up. There's only one God. Come on, somebody. That's why you look up. There's no one like him. Glory be to God. You look down. There's no one like him. Glory be to God. You look left, there's no one like him. You look right, no one like him. He's set apart, righteous, holy, undefiled, the Bible says. Glory be to God. Amen. So I want to I wanna just encourage y'all today. And this rapture dream is, is uh, when my wife, she's waiting on confirmation to share it. Amen. And um, she's getting more revelation on it. She's praying for more revelation, but that just happened today. And we have to wake up, brothers and sisters, because the coming of the Lord is soon. It's soon. Romans 13, 11, read it, saints. It says, for now is our salvation near than we first believed. Amen. Glory be to God. Are we really ready? Are we spiritually ready if the Lord was to descend from heaven today? Those that's listening to us, are you ready if the Lord cracked that scatter day and that trumpet blow? Are you ready today? Have you been living for God? Glory be to God. Have you been living for him? Are you truly born again? Brothers and sisters, are you living your life for him? Amen. Have you cut off sin? Amen. Are you still living a life of sin? Come on, somebody. There's no second chances. You get one shot at the rapture. Come on, somebody. My wife's seen people going up. <laughs> Just going up. Better be one of those people that's going up, brothers and sisters. Those are the only people that's going to be found worthy to escape and stand before the Son of Man. Luke 21, 36.
Revelation 3.10 Because you've kept my word and my patience, I will also keep you from that hour that shall come upon the whole world. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And the devil want people out here playing all the Lord ain't coming no time soon. You got plenty of time. Just keep living your life. You want as many people to get left behind as possible. Don't be one of those. This video is getting a little lengthy, so I just want to say that I love you guys. Thank you for your support. Thank you for y'all prayers, brothers and sisters, because I need them. Amen. I need them. And I know y'all need prayer. I pray for y'all every night, brothers and sisters. I pray for y'all every night because God loves you and we must also walk in love. He that loves not his brother, the love of God is, is not in him. That's what the Bible says. Glory be to God. He said you pass from death into life when we love one another. Amen. Because the Bible is, God is love. 1 John 4, 8. So we must love one another. We must walk in forgiveness. We must want the best for one another. We're living in a world and people don't want to see people do good and people are backstabbing each other and people are talking about one another, brothers and sisters. That should not be. We should be helping one another, building God's kingdom up and especially getting the gospel out, brother. Don't be, a, don't be ashamed of the gospel. Don't be ashamed to tell people that Christ is coming. Don't, if you don't say it, who will? Come on, somebody. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. And how can they hear unless a preacher be sent? Glory be to God. And you look around and say, man, am I a preacher? Am I one? God said in Mark 16, 15, go throughout the whole world and preach the gospel to every creature, brothers and sisters. Don't limit yourself. We can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. Amen. You may not be very hearsed in the word of God. You may not know a lot of scriptures, but you do know that, hey, God loves you and he died for you. Come on, somebody. And he coming soon. Do you know those words can change somebody's life? Amen. That young man looked at me on that train. He said, brother, I don't know you. But the moment you give your life to God and you leave this world behind, God wants to use you. You know that word stuck with me all my life. I was a little, I was a teenage boy then. Knee deep in sin and that word stuck with me. How many know that the word of God will stick with somebody? Come on, somebody. If they call before the foundation of the world, your word means something. Glory be to God. Those are the people we got to reach, those that's chosen before the foundation of the world. Glory be to God. Now, if they ain't chosen before the foundation of the world and they ain't called, the Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. Now, there's some people that ain't going to accept Jesus Christ no matter what you say or do. But there's those that will. Glory be to God. Jesus said, pick up your cross and follow me. And those that did, they received eternal life. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. And when times got hard, the apostles still stayed with him. Jesus said, eat my flesh and drink my blood. And most of the people left him. Jesus said, will y'all leave me too? Peter said, Lord, where shall we go? You have the words of life. Jesus said, I chose y'all, didn't I? Thank you. Because you know what Jesus was saying? When I choose you, come on, somebody. When I choose you, there's some that's going to stick. Huh? Glory be to God. And God was showing us when he chose Judas. <laughs> come on, somebody. You can be called, but not chosen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Judas was called to be one of the 12, but he wasn't chosen because he went against the Lord. And Jesus said that was prophesied it, except for the one that was prophesied it, that he would do it. Ju Judas was, he was chosen and God knew what he was going to do. How many know that God knows those that's going to betray him? God knows the ones that say that they're Christians, but do lie. The Bible says that in Revelation chapter 3. I know those that say they Jews, but do lie. There's some people that's prophets out here that's prophesying to get your money. Come on, somebody. 
There's people that's prophesied so sow a seed of a thousand dollars and God gonna give you a miracle. That is blasphemy. Come on, somebody. I just seen a video today. I won't say the woman's name, but a woman prophesying for a thousand dollars, talking about so they're gonna get a blessing of healing if they sow a seed. That is blasphemy, brothers and sisters. But what I'm trying to say to you right now, we gotta be aware of these things. Hurry up and accept Jesus Christ as Lord. There's a plane above me, uh, excuse me for that, but there's a, there's a, there's false teachers and false Christ that's going to be coming. Jesus said that in the great tribulation, they're going to say, hey, Jesus is over here. Jesus is over there. Jesus is over here. Come on. And a lot of people are going to go over there. Jesus said, do not go. Because there's going to be false teachers and false Christ. There's people that's going to be saying they're the Messiah in the great tribulation. And they're going to be snares. They're going to be catching people off guard. So God wants us to hold on to sound doctrine, brothers and sisters. He wants us to hold on to the meat of the word. Amen. Don't let nobody tell you you got to sow a seed to get blessed. You got to sow a seed for some healing. You got to sow a seed for this, this, and this. You sow a seed as God leads. Amen. Some people just go as far as to say a sacrifice. I heard the woman say that today. A sacrifice, a seed is a sacrifice. Jesus Christ is the final sacrifice. You see, that's false, that's false doctrine. Amen. Now, if God put on your heart to sow a seed, you sow a seed. Amen. But God will put it on your heart what to sow. But don't let nobody say, hey, you're going to get a blessing if you sow this or you sow that. God will put it on your heart. Amen. What to sow. But I just wanted to say that tonight, brothers and sisters. I just had a lot to say. I think the Spirit of the Lord was on me tonight to encourage y'all that Jesus is coming. And we don't know when we're going to leave the face of this earth, y'all. But I can definitely say on this channel that I've given y'all all what God has given me. And I want to say I, I love you guys and I thank you guys. And I'm praying for you guys because the only thing that's going to get us through Jesus told me this at the beginning of this year. He said, many is going to die. Many is going to die this year. And when they see the things that's coming upon the earth, many are going to leave me. Many are going to leave the faith. But those that stay with me, those that stay in me, those that pray unto me, I'll be with them. what the Lord told me and we've already seen many die this year I don't know what's coming y'all five more months left in this year this is July we got August September October November and December five months left y'all keep the faith no matter what we see y'all Know that God is with us. And if God be for us, who can be against us? You see, these descriptions that we got to go to warfare with. How many know you can't fight Satan with the butter knife in the kitchen? The steak knife in the kitchen. Come on, somebody. You got to know the word of God. That's why I'm so blessed that God has blessed this ministry to give out sound doctrine. Amen. I'm so blessed to, to be a teacher of the truth of the word of God. And I'm so glad that he saved my life over 10 times to, to preach the word of God. Because I love God and I fear him. Amen. And I think that God is going to raise up people that's not afraid to tell the truth. That's not afraid to go to jail, not afraid to die for him. Come on, somebody. How many know that God wants some Joshua's? He wants some Moses and some Abraham, some Ruth, some Sarah's. Come on, somebody. Glory be to God. It's what God wants. He wants soldiers, amen, that's willing to stand up for him, that's willing to preach sound doctrine despite of what people think or say. It's what the word says. Oh, you can't judge me. Who are you to judge? A righteous man judges all things, but he himself is judged of no man. Glory be to God. We can judge sin. Amen. I can't judge the intentions of somebody. I can't say, oh, he only did that for this, this, and that. No, but we can judge sin. People say they born again, coming to, come to church in dresses with makeup on and they men. Legs, legs, <laughs> let me not say that. Come on, somebody. 
We, we can judge that. Come on, somebody. We have to point out sin. How many know that the men of God said, you old stiff neck, you haters of the cross, you workers of iniquity? How many know that the Bible men said that? And we have to point out that. Amen. We can point that out. How many know we got to tell our family, hey, you better get saved. The rapture finna happen. You better, you better hear the word of God. The Lord finna come. Amen. Oh, the Lord ain't finna come. You've been saying that for years. How do you know the Lord's finna come? Oh, Putin's talking about going nuclear. They're talking about dividing Jerusalem and having a peace treaty in Jerusalem. We know 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 says, When they say, say peace and safety in certain destruction, and they shall not escape. Come on, somebody. The Lord is coming soon. Amen. We're going to see Jesus Christ in that sky up there. Y'all see that sky up there? I don't know if y'all can see it because it's dark out here, but there's a sky up there. We're going to meet the Lord in the air. The Bible says the Lord shall descend from heaven with the shout and the voice of the archangel. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and those that remain in the life shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. The Lord is coming soon. Amen. That's our comfort. Glory be to God. That God, we shall wait from his son from heaven. That's what the Bible says. First Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians um, chapter 1 verse 10. And 